What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This week we're back on our Godzilla Swap Continental. The last time you guys saw it, we were in the trunk building out our full exhaust, all those metal panels, and getting our electric actuator set. Well this week we're gonna be hopping onto the inside of the car. We got the interior pretty much cleaned out. It is time to start getting our four bucket seats from TMI installed. First little hurdle that we're running into is all the seats are all powered. It does kind of add a little bit of a height thing. So we got a motor here on the bottom of the seat, which is kind of pushing our seat up a little higher. So we did cut out a couple little brackets that were not needed. And we're running into this little hump right here with our frame. So Dave's pulling the frame off the seat. We're gonna modify that thing a little bit, cut off a couple sections of the frame that we don't actually need. And then we're gonna set it back in there and see if that will work. Once we get those things situated and get them figured out how we're gonna mount them, then we're gonna jump to the fronts, which should be much more easy. And then we're gonna start playing with our center console. Hopefully we're gonna get this thing shaped up here pretty soon. Okay, so we chopped off pieces of our track underneath and set everything back together. And now you can see we are resting much closer up to the wall, which gives the maximum amount of leg room back here. We have a couple shims here to get our angle tilt up the front just a hair and our back angle looks good in this set position too. So the next thing we're going to do is have to adapt our stand over here that's going to bolt on to the base of our tracks and then that stand is going to bolt in down here. So we are kicked up a little bit here and we're closer down back here so I'm going to take some dimensions here and here and then be able to know how, how much tilt we need off of this, how high off the ground it's gonna be. And then we could cut our tabs that they give us to that height and then weld them onto our rectangular base. it on and put in the car and then realized that it extended out here and our floor started to dive up into the back sooner so it was actually lifting the back of the seat. So I went ahead and chopped off the back of this bracket, chopped down the extra piece and now I have a piece to put back in. I'm going to pull this off, clean up all these spots weld this back together, then bolt it on, and throw it back in the car. We should be good to go for our next step. Okay, I got my pieces marked here, passenger front, Rear, driver, rear, driver front, and I got my lines. That's my cut mark. And once I cut those, then I'll know exactly where to line them up and be able to weld. We're at a slight angle because the seat's also at a slight angle, so marking them in the car is good because they're not just going to be straight cut. So we'll push these through the bandsaw, clean everything up, and weld it together. So I cut all my pieces, laid them out in here. They're just loose still. Uh, and then I marked where I'm gonna need to clean up on my frame. So next I'm gonna pull the frame, clean it up, put it back in here, and then I'll set these in and actually tack them in in here. And once they're in place, I'll bring them to the bench, final weld them, and then they will be nice and sturdy. We're also gonna have to drill holes here and here. So that way we can do our mounting. There's a frame rail that runs right here. So we need to be beyond that point in order to uh, avoid drilling into the frame.
modified all the brackets in the bottom, got the seat in, in the mock-up position, and then I spent some time lining up the front edges of the sheet and the tilt and the gap behind the two seats, and we are very, very close. One thing is I haven't been able to go into the car to put the bolts in here, so that's gonna cinch down a little bit, make it more even. But I'm using the same exact block as I did on that bracket, so all of our heights and everything should be exactly the same. I made some marks over here, so that way when I put the bracket back in, I'll be able to tell where it lines up to your front and ways to back. And then in order to square it up to the side, I have a measurement here and a measurement here. That keeps me even going straight forward and my relative distance between the transmission tunnel and the edge of the door jam. So now that that's in, I could take the seat out, pull the bracket off, bring the back, bracket back, line it up, and then start to cut my little transition brackets that are gonna go and make an L and be able to bolt through the floor. We got the back seats put in place. We haven't bolted down yet, but at least there's a nice reference here. We're gonna start with the front seats. We got mocked up here with a couple pieces of wood and metal underneath to get our angle and our height. And we're also centered in the middle position of the track travel. So we're putting this in sort of the average person height and then shorter people can move it this way, taller people that way. Our first step here I marked out position of the studs that our bracket mounts to. So there's one here, one over here. And then I measured the distance from the floor in this position to our track. And that's three inches and three and a half. The back's actually gonna be lower, but because the floor is lower, the distance is greater. What we're gonna do now is pull the seat out, get our base in here, and then we could line up the holes on the base where the studs go through to our two marks here. And that will get us our front to back position. And then as far as left to right, we can center it with the center of the steering wheel because we're always gonna wanna be sitting directly in the center of where the steering wheel is. So let's pull the seat out, get the bracket in here, and then we can start playing around, get our correct heights. So I got my bracket with the feet tacked on, mounted to the bottom of the seat. And then I put the seat in here, put my phone bob up here. I did have it hanging while I was sitting in the seat, get it perfectly centered. I have the seat actually pushed way far up, that way I could get the plumb bob to actually touch the center, get an accurate mark. And sitting in it, you know, you get the feel for making it square to the dash and to the steering column. So I got square, I got centered, and I made my marks around where all the feet of the brackets made the floor. So now I'm gonna pull the seat out, take the bracket off, put the bracket back in, and then be able to mark and drill all of my holes for mounting the bracket to the bottom. So in this case, we got studs here and here and on the opposite side for the seat. So once the bracket's mounted in, we could put the seat on top and get the fit inside, the studs inside and be able to you could access all the bolts from here. So we can have the bracket first, then the seat. Okay, we are on to our passenger seat in the front. And I noticed that the floor stamping is exactly the same left and right of the transmission tunnel. So that's gonna make it easy. I'm gonna take some measurements from various points to the frame, translate them to this frame, use my level to get everything perfect. And we should be in relatively the same exact spot as this side.
that we got all of our seats installed, we're gonna start building out the rest of our interior. And we're gonna start with the BMW center console integrating that between our front two seats. So we had it in there for mock-up. First thing in the back was sitting a little bit high around our tunnel. So in order to get to drop a little bit lower, I'm gonna be cutting out some material, some of this plastic material right here. You know, I don't know what that really did with the old one, it's just part of the structure, but we're not gonna be using that anymore. So if I cut this off, I could get the, in the back to drop down an inch and then the whole thing will level out. So we got these two pieces out of here, it sits a lot lower. And I put the back piece back on that's gonna have our vents coming out. We're gonna put our rear AC and then that brings it up higher again. As you can see, it's cut down here and then raises back up in the center. So next I'm gonna cut out this section here. That way our tunnel can come into here and we can have it sit nice and flush, and then once it's all mounted, we could template out and build out a closeout panel for here. This part here is just a empty cubby, so we can take all these useful charge ports and then remount them in this space. We can make a, a face right here. Okay, heading into the back seat here. Let's see where our console is going to be set. And now that we cut out this lower section, it drops down, hugs the transmission tunnel, and levels out everything. So this seems to be working out. The space between the seats is pretty good. And then moving on to the front, the driver's seat, you got cup holders, um, you got your gonna be shifter controls, and then we're gonna have iPad, and that's gonna set right here. We want it a little bit stood off from the dash. We don't want it to block the vents. We don't want it to block getting to our double cup holder cover. So this seems like a pretty good starting position for our console. Next, we have to figure out how to secure it to the body of the car. Starting back here in the rear, I found these two bolt locations here that go into the framework of the console. And I created this template that sits in like this. So there'll be a hole on either side here and here, and you can put hardware in. It'll have to happen with this piece off before the console gets assembled and put together. So this bracket will be permanently installed back there. And then I'm going to make uh, an L-tab or a couple L-tabs off the bottom of this bracket and then weld a couple of vertical studs and the L-tabs will have holes in them. So when you have the whole console mounted, you could just drop it straight down and it'll get located on the two studs. You could tighten it down, but that way we don't have to go through our transmission tunnel with any kind of hardware. It's still bare metal, so it's easy to weld to. And uh, it'll be nice and secure for the back of the console. console back in the car. So now you can see how this bracket works. You have the two tabs here. It's connected here and here. And then we're gonna get this level on top of the console and try to do our best to level it out before putting in our studs. Make it look even and then see where it's at. It needs to shift this way just a hair. A hair more. I think that looks pretty good with our bubble there. Now what I'm gonna do is drop my two studs on there. I could uh, make marks where these are gonna go. And there. Now I know where to put my studs. I'm gonna tack them in. And then we should be able to drop this console down onto the studs. Use two, two cores, just a piece of hardware, easy to get to. Makes everything nice and serviceable. 
So after I fabricated the BMW console, I went ahead and fabricated a metal console to continue off of that. So that ends at the rear seats. But unfortunately, the footage has wandered away. So instead of showing you all the fab work that went into that very tedious metal console, we're just gonna show you a 10 second clip of what it looks like. All right, guys, we got the metal fabricated rear section of the console all fabricated up and installed, and it looks absolutely perfect. The lines match great with the seats as well as mating up to our BMW console. So it looks real nice. The seats are all mounted in. The interior is really starting to shape up. The next step for the interior is gonna be getting our iPads mounted uh, in the rear and for the driver. We're waiting on some frames to come in that our boy Andy's 3D printing for us at Custom Car Emblem. So while we're waiting on that stuff, we're gonna be jumping into the engine compartment, doing a bunch of beauty panels, our intake, and oh, as you see, we already got the motor pulled out. So you guys are gonna have to walk, follow along because next week we're gonna be bringing, that, bringing it hot. So we'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Peace.